welcome to M Talk News, bringing you information of the Christian world. I'm your national news anchor, Dustin Pfeiffer. And for our first story tonight, a Christian adoption agency rescinds a long-standing policy. Bethany Christian Services rescinds a policy which prevents same-sex couples from adopting from their agency. Uh, now, this is a policy that they removed from all 32 of their locations, 32 states that they operate in. Let me correct that. Going as far as to remove from their positional statement God's design of marriage between a man and a woman. However, Bethany Christian Services has not released a statement affirming or agreeing with same-sex marriage. In a statement they released, faith in Jesus is at the core of our mission, but we are not claiming a position on the various doctrinal issues about which Christians of mutual good faith may disagree, said Nate Bolt, uh, Bethany's vice president. So see that, So some see this as a positive step and some see this as a negative step. The topic of Christian-ran orphanages and foster care is a concerning debate which, will, which revolves around the Equality Act. You can find this information at Christian, ChristianityToday.com. Second up on our national news. Cartoons of Faith, co-creator of VeggieTales, creates a new TV series. Mike Naraki, co-creator of VeggieTales and voice of Larry the Cucumber, has created a cartoon, a new cartoon series called The Dead Sea Squirrels. The Dead Sea Squirrels tells the story of Merle and Pearl, two first century squirrels from Israel, who have been preserved in sea salt in a cave alongside the Dead Sea. When 10-year-old Michael discovers them 2,000 years later and sneaks them home in his backpack, hijinks ensue after this salty couple reanimate and take their new friend on adventures full of actions. Humor, music, and character building lessons. Mike and his team, including renowned Disney animator Tom Bancroft and legendary producer Steve Taylor, need your help to make this series a reality. Join our mailing list, share on your social media, media and help us grow our nutty brand information on this series has been gathered through their own website deadseascrolls.com now let's go over to john with our international news all right well thank you dustin for those reports we'll be sure to follow those up with prayer and to keep an eye on them and with that we will now go into the international report of the week so we're going to start in china where Chen Yu, an online Christian bookstore owner, will possibly face the appeals court in mid-March. So he was arrested back in September and charged with illegal business operations. His stay in prison hasn't been easy. Um, for a while, he couldn't even get his hands on a Bible. The prison staff refused to give him the one his mother had sent him initially, but eventually he was allowed to have it. So that's good. We are praising God for that. Um, our brother still looks to God throughout all of this. He is overjoyed, um, he wrote to his parents, that his cellmate is also a Christian, so that they may fellowship together. Um, he has told his parents, you know, to keep their trust in God, to keep focused on the gospel, to grow spiritually, and that he will see them soon. However, his parents are worried that they will die before their son is released. Um, they're asking the world to pray for him and for the situation, and that is exactly what we will do. So, going now over to India, a pastor was attacked in Jharkhand. Um, this was back in January. So, he was publicly beaten for refusing to contribute funds for the worship of tribal deities. Lakshman Orion? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, was called before the village elders on January 24th. The pastor reports um, that they called for him to donate money for the worship of the tribal deities, and he refused. So then he was bound and beaten. He was not angry, he says, as they proceeded to kick him. He says the Lord reminded him of the verses in Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 through 12, which says, Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. 
for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He reports he had a smile on his face the whole time. The village continued to threaten the Christians in the area, um, threatening to force them out if the funds were not given. Eventually, the police were contacted and Pastor Orion and the others were brought to the police station where they gave the money. Um, they continue to pray for the village and have been assured that there will be no more trouble after giving the money. So this really raises a concern, you know. These are Christians who felt, um, because of their religious conviction, that they couldn't contribute to the worship of pagan deities, and they were attacked for it, and eventually they were forced to give up the money. Now, I won't comment on that. Um, I do ask that we pray for our brother's soul. I do ask that we pray for those Christians, that God will help them through this situation, and that if they have stumbled and given the money, I do, you know, I do ask that we pray for them, that God will help them. Um, and I do ask that we pray about this situation. You know, this is, this is not a new thing in India. This is an ongoing series of events in, when, in which Christians are attacked for refusing to conform to the Hindu beliefs of the uh, native population. Okay, so over in Eritrea, 21 young Christian mothers were released from prison. However, what people, again, are noting, as I reported a few weeks ago, is that there are still many Christians who have been imprisoned indefinitely, some of them up to 17 years, by the Eritrean government. So many people are saying, yes, it's great that these Christians have been released. However, Eritrea has made no effort to correct the numerous human rights uh, violations they have committed. And so, again, this is something we need to keep our eyes on. And lastly, let's go to Myanmar, where 11 Christians who were abducted have been released. Um, however, it has been discovered that before they were released, they were severely beaten by the police and soldiers. So they were, I believe it said there were four pastors and 11 youth. I, I could be wrong about that, but if I remember correctly, it's four pastors, 11 youth, who were abducted by the police and soldiers back in February. And they were released, but they were beaten. So we think it's important to know the names of our persecuted brothers. So their names are as follows. If I mispronounce any of them, I do apologize. And if you know the correct pronunciation, please let me know down in the comments. So, Z Zoi Doi Ong, Ma Shi, Zing Ra Ong, Hang Kagda Na Mai, Legang Du Gayang, um, Hang Kum. Hankum Gayang. Uh, again, I am so sorry, guys. Gum Sut Nun. Uh, Peter. Hong Hakong. Um, Zaja Fa. Fra. And Dan Sing Ong. I, I am so sorry, guys. Um, they were returned to their families, but they suffered much trauma. Some of them to the point that they could not speak properly. So, this is a very serious situation, you know, the, um, the correct, you know, the democratically elected government of Myanmar was overthrown, and people are still calling for it to be brought back, and so this is another situation where we ask that, you know, you keep in prayer, we do ask that you pray for all these situations, pray for those who were persecuted, pray for those who have suffered, and continue to follow up on the stories yourself. And with that, we will now go back to Dustin in the studio. Thank you, John, for our international report. We will be sure to pray for Christians in those countries. Now to our top news. Conflict of interest. Religious freedom in a fight with Obamacare. A U.S. appeals court is currently hearing a case on whether or not Christian doctors or hospitals should be forced to do gender reassignment surgeries or treat gender dysphoria. This rule was already in place under current Obamacare regulations, but was applied to non-faith-based doctors and hospitals due to those locations being receiving federal funding. 
with case with all cases pertaining to this things like this, there are always pro, uh, proponents and opponents to this, uh, and to this interpretation of the Obamacare Act. The court has not yet filed an official ruling. Now let's go over to John with our media report. All right. So now let's go to your media report for the week. These are your top ten Christian songs of the week, and. Number 10, we have Graves into Gardens, the live the live version by Elevation Worship and Brandon Lake, released on April 24th of 2020. At number 9, we have Fires by Jordan St. Cyr, released on February or on April April 10th, 2020. Sorry. Um, number 8, we have Say I Won't by Mercy Me, released December 4th, 2020. Number seven, we have Truth Be Told by Matthew West and Carly Pierce, released on March 5th, 2021, so that's good. Number six, we have Help Is On The Way, um, Maybe Midnight by Toby Mack, released on February 19th, 2021. Number five, we have Less Like Me by Zach Williams, released on October 4th, 2019. Number four, we have Thank You, Jesus, for the Blood by Charity Gale, released on March 5th, 2021. Number three, we have Truth Be Told by Matthew West. This is a different version. Um, released on November 8th of 2019. Number two, we have Battle Belongs by Phil Wickham, released on September 4th of 2020. And at number one, for the week of March 6th, 2021, we have Hold On To Me by Lauren Daigle, released on February 26, 2021. And lastly, we will have your organization of the week. So this week's organization is Samaritan's Purse. This is a Christian humanitarian organization which has helped with disaster relief for over 40 years. They are dedicated to helping others and then to sharing the gospel with them. Um, we do ask our subscribers look into donating to them or volunteering with them. Again, that is Samaritan's Purse. And we do hope that you will take a look. And with that, we'll bring this segment to a close. But before we do, we ask that if you have an organization you'd like to see featured, leave it in the suggestions down in the comments. We always want to share the important work of our brothers and our sisters. So this brings this week's segment of M Talk News to a close. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys will pray for the situations we've covered. And I hope you guys will hit subscribe if you haven't already. And join us again next Saturday for another segment of M Talk News. Have a great day. God bless you.